Welcome to the Oven Gleamers World Podcast, helping you navigate oven cleaning as a business. Marketing tips, interviews, and agar cooking tips and news. Now, here's your host, Graham Rogers. It's Graham Rogers here, the founder of Oven Gleamers, the oven cleaning franchise. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about changing jobs. And uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because if you're here looking at uh, the oven cleaning franchise, there's a strong possibility that you are in a job that you don't like or you're finding too stressful or you want to spend more time with your family, or you haven't got a job, you've been made redundant and you're trying or looking to find another job, and you've sort of stumbled across uh, my podcast, uh, and you're thinking, well, m- maybe this would be the answer for me. Uh, if you go, if I go back in my history, I- I've been made redundant. I, I-, I say redundant, uh, I mean, uh, obviously losing my, my job uh, twice. My first time was when I was in the Air Force. Uh, that was uh, uh, more of a, a, a better experience really, being in the Air Force and being told you're gonna to be made redundant because the Air Force made it very, uh, that they gave you a very good incentive to, to leave the Air Force. And when they offered, they, when they ask for volunteer work redundancies, they are like overwhelmed with the number of people asking, putting a a gen uh, app in to to actually see if they could get it. Uh, because the payout was so good. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, 1996 now, and the payout was tremendous, uh, and it meant uh, because I was signed on for a full term in the Air Force, it meant that I would get. Uh, some of my pension immediately. So I, at the time I was, I was uh, 34, so it meant I was gonna get my pension straight away, which was so obviously a very good deal. Um, and uh, really uh, looking from looking at things from that sort of age, I thought, well, you know, uh, there's a strong possibility I'm gonna get a job, uh, and quite a good job. Uh, uh, I uh, had very good qualifications. Uh, when I was in the Air Force, I, I studied for uh, degrees, I, I have two degrees when I left the Air Force and uh, so it was all positive and uh, when I left I got a grant from the local, uh, I think it's the Welsh Business Development Fund, I'm not sure, really sure what they call it, they, I don't know if it's still around actually but at the time you could apply and if you're made redundant you, you obviously you, you got pet the, man, the, the payout and they pay me a nominal sum, I think it's like 40 pounds a week for a year. Which, uh, so it's quite nice to get that extra thing on top of my pension and the lump sum. And it did uh, help propel me into being uh, uh, self-employed in, in inverted commas because what happened was uh, I set up a, a, a computer consultancy. So I became a freelance computer consultant. So that that all went really well, uh, and I got a contract pretty soon after being made redundant, uh, and it all sort of fitted together. And uh, I got contracts one after the other for, uh, I had a really good run, it went for about six years before a couple of things happened. One thing, I got really fed up with doing a new contract every, every sort of six months or a year. Uh, I, I didn't like going through the stressful part of actually starting a new job uh, and having to prove that I performed. And, and the other thing was actually keeping up to date. Uh, I was doing IT programming. Uh, you, you had to keep up to date, and I found that very difficult, uh, especially when I had no set routine when I was actually living away. Because uh, I had a, ha- a house in the middle of nowhere in North Wales, and. Um, it meant I was living away 
when I was working in the, on the computer contracts, living in hotels, and I just got, I didn't really get myself into a proper routine living in hotels, and uh, it became stressful, and I just didn't really like doing it anymore. And really, I was just hanging on because the money was so good. Yeah, I was getting paid a tremendous amount of money. So after doing six years of that, there there, be, there came a time in uh, around about 2002 where I found it difficult to find jobs. So up until then, I'd I'd uh, get a contract, finish a contract, go on holiday, come back, get another contract within a, a week or so. Uh, but in 2002, things didn't really work out like that. I I just couldn't get a job. But I, I, would go for like loads of interviews and not get the job. Uh, I think the market became more competitive. There was a like a recession in the in the IT industry. Uh, they they just weren't uh, because they recruited so heavily leading up to the millennium uh, because of the, the supposedly bug. Uh, afterwards, they were getting rid of IT people. So 2002 recession, I, I couldn't get any work, and uh, I spent a year doing nothing. So really, um, and as I said, I didn't really, I uh, wasn't that fussed of actually rushing uh, to get a job. So I think my negative attitude and the fact that it that it's a more difficult market contributed to me not being able to get a job. But uh, at the time, I started looking at ideas uh, of doing something else, and uh, because I had a limited company already from the being an IT consultant, I thought, well, I could just start a proper business. You know, I say proper uh, compared with a contractor. When with well, a contractor, you're just working. Uh, it's just uh, the reason you've got a limited company is it's the entity that you're working under. Um, so a proper business, and I started looking at different ideas. Uh, I did, uh, I nearly set up a coffee shop. I went through, found the premises. I went through a whole process of learning how to run a coffee shop and all that sort of thing. Uh, but when push came to shove, I didn't go ahead with it because uh, the premises I found, the council, I belonged to the council, the council were telling me two different things, two different part, de departments in the council were telling me two different things. So, um, I didn't go ahead with it, and then I started looking at cleaning businesses, um, and uh, I went through because uh, when I was an IT, IT contractor in Solly Hall. I had we had a very good cleaning company. He used to come clean our, our property I was sharing with with three other contractors. So I started looking at that as a business, and uh, eventually, uh, really. Uh, I just had to do something because I was running out of money. I was, was getting in quite a desperate situation. I bought a franchise and it's uh, a, a cleaning franchise. We've no longer got it. What happened was uh, after 10 years, I bought myself out of the contract. Um, and it's now, it's now, we've still got the company, but we run it as our own branded uh, company. But anyway, I bought that franchise back in uh, 2002, right at the end of 2002, and things went very well. I followed what the plan, the, the franchise all gave me, gave me, followed it, and it all worked out really well. Uh, and while that was happening, I worked out that I needed more money because um, uh, my commitments, uh, because when I was an IT contractor, I was earning over, over 120,000 a year, I made large commitments uh, which I should have really sorted out, but I, I still had these outgoings and I needed to make more money. So people kept on mentioning to me about oven cleaning uh, and I had an arger in the house and the story is basically I decided to start an arger um, oven cleaning business. But uh, the long shot of it is that um, my friend, uh, he was also in the Air Force with me, he was made redundant uh, about five years after I left, I think. Now, maybe a bit, maybe longer, ten years after. He did another, another ten years in the Air Force. So anyway, when he was made redundant, he took volunteer redundancy. He, um, he went to lots of interviews 
but he didn't take them uh, when he was offered jobs uh, and he got himself into a really negative spiral. Uh, so his, his um, you could say, journey of leaving the Air Force was completely different from mine. Whereas I, get, I was like positive, uh, I got the job, uh, got the contract, uh, got the funding, all, everything went really well. For him, he just got in a negative frame of mind. And uh, even though he had a degree in IT, uh, uh, computing electronics subjects, he just didn't get a job. Um, in fact, he, he turned down the best job offer he got, which was to do the same job he, he had in the Air Force as a civvy, because uh, he said he didn't want to work there. And I think it took him three and a half to four years before he got a job. Uh, so a huge negative effect on his life, really. Uh, and he ended up being a postman. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I think he could have got a uh, something a lot better, uh, or he could have thought about a business. So, what is what am I talking? Why am I talking about this? Well, it brings you on to a franchise. You know, I, I've got this oven cleaning franchise, and I believe that if you've been made redundant or you're in a job that you're finding this too stressful, as like I said at the beginning, you can start an oven cleaning business within a few weeks. Uh, I've got a process now where I can get you trained up. In, in a couple of weeks we get the van ready in a couple of weeks and you could be up and running very quickly getting money and going in a positive direction with our help so if that's of interest to you just get in contact with me uh, just email us or uh, you will find some sort of link on that or wherever you're seeing this or listening to this podcast you'll find a link you can, you can click on just kind of get in contact with us uh, and uh, we'll be able to give you information but as I said the difference is uh, you've got to think about if you are in a position where you haven't got any work you've got to think about if if I don't do action what are the likely consequences of me not doing action now or, or say in the next 90 days if I don't do anything in the 90 days what's going to happen so if you say in 90 days time if I start taking these baby steps now towards a positive outcome it doesn't matter what it is you know I'm, I'm talking about an oven cleaning franchise but it could be any sort of business idea or any any way of progressing back into a full-time job if you start taking steps and start planning it now there's a good chance you'll be closer to your target of of getting a, making a living again uh, if you start taking those baby steps. Okay, so that's Graham Rogers talking about redundancy. Uh, until next time, thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Oven Gleamers World Podcast. If you have enjoyed it, please subscribe. Please tell all your friends and join us for our next episode.